This week on the O oh, the Anthem podcast, we give an update on Rob's health from last week, and we celebrate our sixth year anniversary doing this podcast and all the memories that come along with it. Uh, in the latest news, we have a lot of Corona uh, talking nationally, talking about here in LA, uh, Newsom as the governor sort of leading a shadow United States. Uh, we can't wait to get into that. Kushner not understanding exactly what the national stockpile is. Trump and his consistent tone. And then we're getting into a lot of election stuff because Wisconsin is voted to uh, have their election tomorrow. Should Bernie drop out? A whole lot more. You don't want to miss it. Coming up right now on the Idiot Podcast. Social distancing doesn't mean we can't get close in podcasting for him. This is Corey, and this is the Year of the Anthem podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. It is day 17 of quarantine, shower number 10, and yes, <laughs> we're both wearing pants. This is the Year of the Anthem podcast coming to you from the hashtag OTALA studios, high above the 110 freeway in downtown Los Angeles, California. Thank you for joining us. Yes, and today is a very special day because it is the... Uh, six year anniversary We just figured out the math We redid it in our heads Yes uh, This is the end of our Sixth completion Or sixth completed year Of the podcast Going yes. into year seven Sixth birthday Yes Of the podcast uh, I never thought we'd get here ah, <laughs> You know <laughs> uh, Let's see We moved uh, Studios Twice mm-hmm. oh, Three times Because we started out Oh no It was just a practice episode That was in Denton well, I mean, we did a couple episodes in Denton. It yes. was like the going back and forth, you know, like every once oh, in a while it would, true, be, yeah. it would be up in Baltimore County and then it would be in the Eastern Shore. Took the show on the road a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, then we did the... Uh, we did the live show. Live show. That yeah. was year one. Um, We'd love then, to do more live shows, but I mean, like, uh, obviously, <laughs> all the events that we had scheduled had to be, unfortunately, canceled. Uh, <laughs> Despite, the, you know, the... the you know, it's really... It's a, a, a love to... Much love to our fans. I mean, we didn't even mention it on the podcast, and almost immediately within announcing our live show in D.C., the Verizon Center sold out. Sold so, out. I mean... Completely, yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't even have a chance to mention it on the podcast, but now, I guess... Uh, <sighs> Uh, and you can uh, contact Ticketmaster for those <laughs> returns. Uh, you could probably get I'm the sure $5. they'll be accommodating. The five dollar ticket cost refundable. The forty five dollar <laughs> fee not refundable. Unfortunately, sorry. Listen, you still use the website. I mean, <laughs> I that's I don't know what to that's tell. That's how this you. works. But uh, one really good announcement going into year seven of the podcast. There is now a new place where you can join in and have a conversation about us, the podcast, the news of the week, and whatever we should talk about. The Anthem Alliance group on Facebook. Make sure you're going on and joining there. It's a great place for everyone to convene and talk about your favorite podcast. Yeah, and uh, more than anything, if there's some piece of news that you see during the course of the week and you're just like, why aren't they talking about this? Drop it there. Yeah. And then we can all like have a little talk about it. And, Absolutely. Uh, uh, put some of the good ones up on the on the show each week. And, of course, that's linked to the uh, Facebook.com forward slash or the anthem where you may be watching us live right now and we're live every week. But uh, so a lot going on. Uh, where do you want to start this week? I mean, we guess we could talk about anniversary stuff. It's been six long years. Well, uh, let, let's recap where uh, from last week. Because sure. uh, last week we recorded late because you were you were feeling ill. Yes. Uh, and. Uh, you were still feeling ill during the recording of last week's podcast. Uh, I was. They wouldn't give you a test at the hospital. Yes. Which is where we had been on Monday on recording day, yep. usual recording day. Um, and you have since gotten a test. I have. Yes. So <sighs> I can't wait till we get a studio space. <laughs> it, we were going to use the Verizon. I can't I wait. Was... I can't wait until the children go back to school. Honestly, yes. Can we get the children back in school? <laughs> Cor- Corona be damned. Let's just send the children back to school. Uh, but no, uh, yes, I was able to get a test. Um, so not through my insurance provider. 
unfortunately. Mm. Uh, the only way that I could get a test was through L.A. County. L.A. County shifted their qualifications slightly. Uh, they've actually shifted them again since. I think that uh, Garcetti and Newsom, we're going to talk about a little later, leading the nation as mayor and uh, governor in trying to address the crisis. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, what they're doing is trying to get more people tested as much as possible. And uh, so I went on. The qualifications had changed. I was able to sign up. Super easy process. Uh, and in fact, if you'd like to see what the process is like to get a uh, test at a drive through facility, there's a video up on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Rob Cheek, and you can see what it's like, not only just to go through the process, but to see me take the test. Super easy, uh, and it's not scary at all, uh, and I fast forward to the gross part, so mm -hmm. go check it out on, on youtube.com forward slash Rob Cheek. Uh, obviously, I'm feeling a lot better today. The fever is still there. We're back to the low-grade fever that we were at two weeks ago. More like 100 degrees as opposed to like 102, 103. I, kind yeah, of I've, been, I've been bouncing around between you know 99 and 100. Uh, I hit 101 for a little bit yesterday, but it wasn't noticeable. Uh, mm. the, the sweats have gone away, so hopefully I won't be sweating through today's episode. I had uh, Last night I had one of those fever stress dreams, which wasn't fun for that week. Yeah. So that's new that that's back. But uh, otherwise... Feeling a lot better. It really just comes down to what kind of day did I have. Uh, today was a relatively stressless day at work. I had one call, and then it was basically me on Salesforce, like building stuff. So I was able to focus in and just kind of do that and not deal with like putting out fires, which is what I have to do a lot of the time. Right. So with those kind of days where I'm like bouncing around and doing a bunch of stuff, they can be really stressful and I think it wears down the system. Monday was a d bad day last week just because it was the hospital, the urgent care and the whole nine. But, uh, it, you know, like I said on uh, the video and, you know, I also did a video just about general health and how I'm feeling. That's on YouTube. It's also on Instagram. Mm. Um, and just saying, you know, like it, it comes in waves and unlike the n total number of cases, which we're going to talk about in a minute, uh, it's I'm, I rode this wave upward where I had good I had bad days and good days and bad days and good days and bad days. But the good days eventually were not as good as the good days were before. Mm -hmm. So you kept getting progressively worse, even though I was still kind of waving up and down. Yeah. Well, now we're on the other side of that where I'm still having good days and bad days. Good days are getting better than the good days were before. Yeah. The bad days are still bad. But, you know, they're comparable to, like, the good days last week. Yeah. So, I don't know. I you know, We're going to keep pushing through this. Honestly, if I could take four days and just sleep, yeah, I'd probably be set. Yeah. But, you know, work is what work is. So, I don't really have the chance to just take it and sleep. Um, maybe next weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, feeling a lot better. Uh, you know, color is coming back, even though. Well, it's funny. The, you know, uh, the thing I've known about Rob for the entirety, basically, of the time I've known him is that he doesn't sleep much on, like, the normal day to day. Like, yeah. he, he's one of those four or five hour sleepers on most normal. I think that's probably your average. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then when you get sick, or <laughs> if there's some reason that you can sleep, it just like automatically goes to you sleep for 18 hours. It's like you're in hibernation or something like that. Like, it's, and it's weird because, you know, when I go on vacation, I don't do this. But yeah. there are occasions when it's like, you know what? I'm going to take four days off and just have a little mini staycation. Right. Recharge. I just sleep the entire time. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's a staycation just to sleep. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, I was I'm thinking about when I went to Hawaii and I worked all day drove i think i podcasted that night i drove from uh the studio there to new york yeah for my overnight flight which landed in phoenix in the morning and then put me in hawaii the next morning and then just went about my vacation so it was relaxing but it wasn't like recharging i guess right right, right. spiritually recharging but not <laughs> body recharging yeah 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 um and then like later on that year i was like you know what i just need to take a couple days off so i took four days off and i literally slept the first three days. And then the fourth day was like, I got to get back on a good sleep schedule or court in the morning is going to be terrible. So. Well, the, the thing I've, I've uh, noticed myself and we'll get on to more of the news here in a second, but uh, I, I didn't fall asleep until like eight thirty AM the other day. <sighs> yeah. And last night I was able to get to sleep at like 6 AM, which is still not great, but better than eight thirty. Like it is, it is not doing me well to sort of have like this non-structured life 
Like yeah. there, there's nothing that feels regular about like how I'm like, I used to like go out for lunch and like, I'm not doing that. And, and I mean, that, that's the thing is that you're even the non-structure you used to have is extra non-structured. Now. Yeah. Cause it's like, ah, well, I got to make sure that I get the to, little bit of things that made me feel like I have structure, which are not there. Yeah. Like really fuck with me and like box chicken closes at two. So I got to get there by <laughs> two to get lunch. Yeah. Well, box chicken is closed. So now yeah. it's like, uh, well, if I go do go somewhere local to get lunch, they're open till all day. So what time? Doesn't matter. Well, I'll yeah. lunch at four. And you have the three of us annoying you all day. So it's like, <laughs> what time does everybody want to have lunch? Eh, okay. Whatever time. Doesn't really matter. Anywho. Yeah. Uh, moving on. But oh, by the way, one note before we get on off the 60 year anniversary. Yes. I watched, uh, <laughs> by the way, one feature I think Netflix should add. I just want to be able to go office. Show me an episode. Because I realized that like... Like a shuffle? A shuffle. Yeah. And just like, I, I want The Office, but I just want one episode from any of the 10 seasons. I, I've wanted this for a lot of different series. Oh, yeah. Life. Not like, just The Office, but... I mean, there, there's a lot of great shows that are kind of like... Uh, things that I've seen so many... Uh, I wouldn't want to like watch like The Wire on Shuffle. Yeah. Because like... <laughs> you, it, if you just watch one out of context from the rest, it doesn't really work as well. Because it's like reading like one chapter out of a book at random. Yeah. Like it's just weird. Of like uh, a, a English book. Like right. a, a literary book. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like I'm reading The Odyssey and it's just like pick up one in chapter. chapter 17 and I'm just like, oh, I don't understand anything that's going. I feel like uh, I could have had a little pre- preview into but this. But I mean like, you know, The Office, Entourage, uh, Park, Law and Order is Park a great one. Oh, Law and Order definitely. Yeah. But Park and Rec. The is Good like Wife would be a good one for that too because like there's a sort of case of the week yeah. feeling to it. So um, 30 Rock. Yeah. Uh, basically any of the NBC shows from I mean, the late I, 90s. I guess you 2000s. could give people the option to just shuffle whenever. But I mean like I would like the idea to like, you know, reality TV is probably really great for, you know, I watch Kitchen Nightmare sometimes when I go to sleep. Yeah. Like that would be a great one to just like pick me some random one. It's fine. I don't, yeah, don't want to have to choose because what I end up doing is just scrolling through for two minutes, like going like, yeah, uh, I don't know if I really want to watch blackberry cafe today like so i i i brought that up because i'm watching i was watching in order i'm again at uh season nine Mm -hmm. and uh i realized i was one episode away from the like debut of the documentary and i've had trouble going to sleep anyway just you know our system is off from all of the weird sleep schedule and i think i couldn't go to sleep because i knew that episode was coming and there was something about it and i didn't know what but i wanted to watch it so i ended up watching it here is what I wanted. They have the ability, and just like them, we have the ability to go back over the last six years of our life and chronicle everything that we've been going through for yeah. the last six years. I was thinking about going to Detroit. Well, we can actually go back to the episode before where we talked about, we did this crazy thing, we bought tickets, we're going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the episode after where it's like, okay, so we just got back the nice people who left the note on the windshield of the car yeah. and like all of that stuff. Like our entire lives are chronicled across the last six years, and you brought it up. You brought it up uh, early this week. It's something that is a constant uh, refrain. I think is that Corey had the idea to do this about six years before we started doing the podcast, <laughs> and what it would be like to just be able to say 2008 to present our entire lives chronicled week by well, week. Well, not only that, but there's a uh, one thing I really enjoy about the podcast medium is that. I feel like it's sort of like when you're an actor or a writer or a director, there's a certain number of years that you just sort of have to get through where people are just learning who you are and like what you can provide and people aren't calling you because they don't know who you are. It's not because you're not talented, but there's like a breakthrough period. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, people who started back when I was originally suggesting the idea, like Corolla and Bill Simmons and stuff like that. Yeah. Rogan, those types of people. They were in Marin. They were uh, they basically had the six years of, well, what is this podcasting thing and how do I get it and all that. And then they were already popular when people first started getting into it. Exactly. Independently. Yeah. Because they had already sort of built up a catalog and a, a knowledge base of it. The guy and from then, News Radio has a podcast. <laughs> I'm into that. Let's watch. But now it, it it's great because there's uh, the niche based aspect of podcasts is so amazing because if i want to just learn about 
Chevy race cars. I'm sure there's an, a Chevy race car podcast I could listen yep. to. Yep. I know nothing about it. I'm sure I could find out a ton. Like, And you binge it for uh, two or three days, and then you're like, mm-hmm. I know everything there is to know about <laughs> Chevy race cars now. How are they at episode 7,000? I don't know. But uh, Oh, yeah. they're talking about the Balsinger coil this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was I'm waiting for this. <laughs> But it's it's so weird the the ability to that uh you know uh, like two years ago I think it also came up in my time hop two years ago of me going back and listening to every episode I think at that point we were at like one seventy or one eighty yeah and I listened to all one hundred eighty back to back and f- going and just finding the humor and chronicling through every single bit of it and I'll remind everyone episode one which is tasty and you should check it out was us doing MySpace. <laughs> quizzes well we wanted we wanted something that would that would be like uh forever kind of thing so uh we figured that was a way to like do like a who are we and what what do you get to know but i mean like uh i i listened to a podcast a long time ago and it was uh, about like you know filmmaking and stuff like that and it had keegan michael key on it and at the time he was just you know some nobody actor who yeah. happened to be friends with the people who ran the podcast. Yep. Yeah. And you know he was just as funny and entertaining as he was you know 5 years later when he was on uh on Comedy Central all of yeah. a sudden, you know, and it's it, it wasn't like people didn't know him. It's just like people didn't know to think to cast him kind of yep. thing. And, and hopefully the 6 years from now is you know where uh more established along the line and then people will be like oh my god you know <laughs> Corey baker and rob cheek both have a podcast together and they've been doing it for six years like you could learn all the listen to us while we were doing heretics yes when oh, i'm god. debuting a number one film in the country you know like it, it, it's when when Corey stayed up i think three days in a row to hit the deadline for one episode of heretics yeah because it just like didn't save the first night and you're like woke up after three hours like shit and had to re-edit the whole I think, I think i was like rendering i was like i'm gonna go to sleep for two hours and i rendered and then when i woke up it was like all like gone and just i was stopped. like oh yeah. <laughs> But and that is all here in the podcast in the history. It's a history of us. It's a history like, of not to say company. not to say I'm like we're Scorsese or Tarantino or anything like that. But yeah. imagine if before they got big, Scorsese and Tarantino had a podcast together. Wouldn't yep. you want to know like uh, like what was happening in the lean years before they really hit it big? Like, and wouldn't you want to see when one when Scorsese made that hard right turn one year and then eventually came back to st- <laughs> some semblance? <laughs> I just I had a tweet this week too that was like oh yeah uh, check out the podcast this week Corey made a hard turn to the right uh, <laughs> and then started my accusations that Corey was a Nazi for about eighteen months before real Nazis started popping <laughs> up again and we were like oh this is not funny anymore yeah okay. I never thought it was funny but <laughs> that's fine you're allowed to you're allowed to find things funny I guess yes uh, and getting into some things that are not funny uh, check out the, the by the way Corey did an amazing amount of work on odianthem.com. Every single episode, from episode one to episode three twelve, and when you're listening to this, three thirteen will be there as well. Every episode's available, easily searchable on the podcast or on the website, ottheanthem.com. Go and check that out. You can find episode one, and you can find the ones we talk about heretics. I would want to say that you could probably do a find on each of those pages. When we talked about heretics, heretics was in the description and in the title. So I know for sure that. Uh, if you are on the WordPress site, mm-hmm. you can search like the tags and stuff, and I would have tagged it Heretics. So there you go. So you just um, click on one episode that takes yeah. you to the WordPress. Site. To be fair, I have not uh, mastered my my ability to get like a comprehensive search built into the website yet. But one of these days, hopefully, what I'd love to do one of these days, and this is quite the undertaking, is basically just play all the episodes and get like a transcript of each one, and then be able to search mm-hmm. the transcript for like anything we if we talked about. I mean, Rand Paul five years ago, we could just pull <laughs> pull can, it out. We can do that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's assume that we did about an hour ten for each episode. Three hundred episodes is three hundred and uh, nearly four hundred hours. Yeah. Uh, at six bucks an hour. Uh, so uh, listen. <laughs> If anybody can <laughs> going back in the history books, Patreon, <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can build a website search for Corey or take over the website for us, that'd be fantastic. Uh, if you're willing to do that or figure out how to transcribe uh, for free. I don't know if I want to just give up 
the the podcast whoever no what i might get some jeff Lowe looking motherfucker (laughs) going like yeah i'll take care of your whips i'll update it every week what i really like though is for them to give you like an interface where you can do the week to week and they do the big maintenance somebody who does big maintenance for you where you're like you know what i had this idea about a search where you could search for any topic and tie the show notes in from the wordpress to this site it's amazing though like i've made it so much easier for myself to like post a new episode of the podcast on the website and stuff like that and yet still every single week i get everything uploaded it's you know out there in the universe and i'm getting ready to do the post and i'm just like looking at the blank page and i'm just like i don't want to do it (laughs) it's just like it's like the writing writer in me just <laughs> looking at the scene that I have read, and I'm just like, there's better things I can do. <laughs> uh, it just makes me think of that meme where it's like uh, introverts and it's like um, the world and the world now will stay inside. Well, now I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But speaking of staying inside, um, of course, the topic of the week, the topic of every week from now until <laughs> God knows when coronavirus. Um I feel like as part of our public duty, we should yeah. go through the official count numbers. And I want to make it clear because we figured this out in the pre-show meeting when we were discussing numbers. There are actually two sets of numbers going around. One is the official set kept by the CDC, and they're actually delayed 24 hours. So yeah. the number set of numbers I'm going to give you for the most part are going to be yesterday at 4 p.m. And the reason they do that is so that every case can be confirmed that's reported. That way... You know, nothing is overreported. Um, or if you there, apparently there's a lot of like, if you're in the hospital dying of cancer, then you might get lumped in with a Corona death because yes. they're just reporting all deaths equally and not like. Or if you uh, if you are already uh, in last stages of life and you get exposed to Corona in the hospital, is that a Corona death? Yeah. Well, by the current statistics, no, because you were less than six weeks from end of life anyway. The corona did nothing to speed up your death. You yeah. literally just were like, Test you were 197 dead. years old. A strong breeze would have done it. Yes. <laughs> then we shouldn't lump those in because what we want are the true numbers of the spread of the pandemic. Not yeah. necessarily the just because you had corona and you died. Uh, if you have corona and you get hit by a car, you should not be counted in with the people who were killed by corona. Right. Despite the fact that you were positive and you died. Yeah. So there are kind of like first call numbers and then official numbers, just like an election. So the official numbers are as of 4 p.m. yesterday, and that's what I'm going to go through first. Um, For L.A., city of L.A., or sorry, L.A. County, Yeah, we are at 6,360 infections, reported infections, and 147 dead uh, for... Which is actually not not horrible. I mean, like... uh, Considering that L.A. County has roughly the same number of people as New York City has, and they are having a way worse time of it than we are. And we may still be behind and them some. Yeah, but and th- that's the word I heard. We're, we're a couple, like, uh, 14 days behind New York. Mm. I, meant, I meant to tell you. Uh, we were talking about in the, in the pre-show meeting about a report that Corey couldn't find. I found something similar that said that not that we are on the other side of the curve, but that... If you compare the predictions two weeks ago to the predictions now, we have drastically reduced the curve. Oh, okay. We're still on our way up, but we have lowered the predictions immensely. Right. Because when they said, hey, stay home, people in L.A. stayed home. Yeah. And people in New York were like, well, man, I get, like, there's that video from the <laughs> Fuck Bronx. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, man. I'm going to. But there's a pe- the video of a people in the Bronx where like the train station has, it's just packed with people. Yeah. And I, mean, I think that's part of it, too. The car culture in L.A. has been like, well, even if you're essential and you have to get to work, it's you in your car. Yeah. And there's another 15 cars around you. But in New York, nobody has cars. So it's like every nurse and cop and essential worker is on the subway. They're on yeah. the subway. That's how they're getting around. So, like, it still looks very packed. Uh, and we were talking about the freeway. The freeway looks very empty. But if I was to sit there with a clicker and count the cars, I'd probably be astounded by how many cars went by every hour. Yeah. It's still way lower than it was in January. Oh, I mean, it's it's noticeably different. Yeah. Uh, I I think that L.A. is a more inclined, uh, even though there's sort of like a rebel-based idea of the person who lives in L.A., <laughs> I always think it's like the rebel who wants to get away with as much as they can without getting arrested. <laughs> like, I'm not going to I'm not going to be the rebel who graffitis the wall. Uh, I'm going to be the rebel who like skates where I'm not supposed to. And then, well, the, and then the security guard comes by and he's just like, get out of here. You're not allowed to skate here. 
I'm I just think, like, come catch me, copper. They are the rebel who graffitis the wall, but it's they acceptable. Get, here. They get permission <laughs> from the city first or the building owner, and then they make a beautiful piece of art on right. the wall as graffiti rather than just like tagging something. Yeah. Although we get plenty of tagging too. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, for the state of California, uh, official numbers again, we are at 14,336 with 343 dead. And that means that uh, L.A. makes up a little less than half, about 42 yeah. percent of the people in California, which makes sense because the other 42 percent is the Bay. Yeah. And then. Well, I mean, in San Diego, too, is a, is well, a San big Diego population is like base. At, at like six percent. And then it's literally four percent everywhere else. Right. Because people don't realize California, big state. Uh, San Francisco is is tough too cuz they they sort of have more of a New York thing where they're like on top of each other a yeah. lot more than LA is. Well, we had the opportunity to do a uh a FaceTime with Corey's family and mm. uh I don't know, I, I guess we've talked about it before that your brother lives in the Bay Area. Yeah. And just like how it's impacted their lives of, of I mean, they were on lockdown before we were. They were. Yeah. And um you know, they're so used to kind of being able to like it's walkable, yes, but then really anywhere in the city, you just get on the BART and take the BART somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if he has a car. Does he have a car? No. He he has a bike pass. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Because he can easily bike to work now, so. <sighs> Living the dream. <laughs> Living the dream. Uh, how did I shock up with the wrong Baker brother? Anyway. <laughs> uh <laughs> uh you know, but- it's, so, it's so funny. When I was, when I was really young... I would bring friends over to the house and then <laughs> they would become friends with Brendan and then I would hear less and less of them and I would just hear casually about Brendan like talking to the person that I had started to become friends with and mm-hmm. then I'm just like <laughs> keeping okay. him away from like new <laughs> Hey, no, let's you... go to your house. No, no, let's go to your house. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Rob's like, I never knew you had a brother. <laughs> I literally found out this weekend before we called him. I walked in. He was talking to some guy who looks kind of like him on the TV. And I got to like, tell you, I like the guy, though. <laughs> First impression, I'm thinking about moving to, to the bed. I don't even know. I, I know it's super deadly right now, but, uh, you know, and expensive. See if they need a roommate. I mean. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, nationwide, again, official numbers are at uh, 330,891 with 8,910 dead. Now, the other number that I really want to talk about is the unofficial number kept by Johns Hopkins. Uh, Based on data, which has us at about 356,000 cases and 10,783 dead. Mm. And the reason that number is important is because it means we are now the number one country when it comes to deaths from Corona. Yeah. Surpassing China, the country where this disease began, and they had no idea what it was. I would argue, though, that numbers from China are never to be fully trusted. And And then there's the question, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not saying that uh, they are... 50% 50% less than what they're reporting or anything like that. But much like you were just saying, uh, the, if somebody walks in front of a car, we're not counting them as a Corona death. Yeah. Like there, there is a part of China where I imagine like, well, he technically died of kidney failure, not of Corona. Oh, okay. But yeah. Yep. The reason we is, he was in the hospital and his kidney died was because he was <laughs> trying to fight off the infection. Like I thought maybe you were insinuating they were just dragging patients outside and shooting them and being like, gun death. I don't know. Well, I don't mean, know what to tell you. Uh, fucking what's his face in uh, uh, Thailand or oh, not oh, Thailand. Uh, Duarte uh, in Philippines. Yeah, Philippines. Yeah. Like saying like it, we'll shoot the people cops in the are just going to shoot them in the street if they see <laughs> How are you going to keep people from leaving the house? We're going to shoot them if we see them. You know what? Effective, though. I yeah. mean, listen, it, not good, terrible, Yeah, but effective. Yeah. If if Garcetti was just like. If Garcetti said, if I find you on the street, I'm going to shoot and kill you. I'd be like. I'd stay. I'm going to stay in the I'd house. For <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, listen, we figured out it's uh, what a quarter mile to walk down to the other <laughs> building and back. Like. All right, yeah, but let's go for a walk just to the other end of the building and back. It's inside. Just cut to uh, an important breaking story from the governor. It's on all the TV networks, and Newsom's just sitting there with his like fucking commando outfit, like his military grade <laughs> California governor outfit. Yeah, and he's just like, "Attention, residents of California, you weren't listening. So here's the deal: if I find you, I'm gonna hunt you down, I'm gonna kill you, and I'm not gonna ask questions. This has been Gavin Newsom." Live in fear. <laughs> Tell me why I imagine his commando suit to literally just be a suit that's in camo. <laughs> it's like a Brooks Brothers and a camo prince. 
which is like little stars for like over the coming, shoulder. Yeah. And he's got like like the what, the hard over the, the yeah, uh, like that. epithets or uh, <laughs> yes on the shoulder. The ones like a Banana Republic dictator has. Yes, like. exactly. <laughs> and he's got one camo on the jacket, different camo pattern on the shirt. The one on the tie <laughs> matches the Give jacket. Give him a hat like Gaddafi too. I always like that. <laughs> The if somebody could do like Photoshop, billowy. put Gavin Newsom <laughs> in a Gaddafi outfit. That would I don't, be amazing. He's been doing such a good job. I don't know why we're picking on him. All right, fair <laughs> enough. Okay, and you know what? That's, that's a good segue because uh, let's just skip down to that. Gavin Newsom seems to be leading the nation in the way that a president might do so in other ways, I yeah. guess, in other times. Well, it, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> the, the Republicans at times like these are... Uh, uh, going to their baser instincts and saying, uh, this is a country of states and states should decide we're a, we're mm. a federalist society. Yes. Uh, absolutely. and then it started doing things like, uh, everyone needed ventilators and the governors were literally, uh, outbidding one another for the ventilators that they were all trying to buy. Yeah. Uh, and Cuomo was talking about it, uh, a couple days ago saying this is madness. Cause I'm spending all day, like looking at like eBay yes, and watching California ventilators. bid me up and stuff like that. We're all paying more because of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Gavin Newsom decided to, uh, collect a bunch of governors from various States across the country and sort of do group buys on things that they all need. Yep. Effectively Promising taking the job of the president of the United <laughs> States by leaving it up to States to figure it out and them deciding that it's better if we do this together. Now, wait, I feel he's, like... He's, he's basically become the shadow president here. That, that's what I was going to say. I feel like we almost have a shadow government operating. Because, again, we are a federalist society. Yeah. And uh, a federal republic means that at each level, we have duplicate levels. We right. have a, a Well, and, and to think that, like, a, you know, for uh, simplified terms, government... Uh, federal government is good for Democrats. Yes. And uh, state government is good for Republicans. That's where... They would prefer the the leadership sort of happen right. from more local for Republicans and national for Democrats. But keep in mind, in an emergency, generally speaking, strong federal government is what you want because yeah. you want resources to be allocated nationally to where they need to go. Right. The states thing doesn't work so much. Um, and let me just say, you, this is an example you used, and I just thought about it in the pre-show meeting. Uh, there was a time when there were two countries sharing this same space. Yeah. Well. One of them claimed to be a country anyway, and we were fighting each other. And one of those countries said, we are a federal republic, and we're going to allocate resources wherever we deem necessary. And the other one said, we're a bunch of states, and we're going to confederate together, and we're going to just operate as a union, but a very loose union. Yeah. And by the end of that war, they had adopted a federal system because they were like, we can't get anything anywhere. Yeah. We need one army, one government allocating resources. So let's just say we've tried it the other way. The, this way is better. Right. Um, and what you're describing there, where a strong executive gathers resources and divides them up. Yeah. It sounds a little bit like some sort of national stockpile. Yeah. Is that something that the U.S. would have? So generally? we do. Oh, OK. And That's good. Uh, if you check their website about a week ago, uh, you would have seen that they uh uh, basically keep a stockpile of needed goods just in case there's some sort of emergency. True. Yeah. Um, so there's medical equipment. There's like bottles of water. There's blankets. There's, you know, sandbags. Like if there's a hurricane, there's FEMA. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Jared Kushner decided to speak. And uh, <laughs> he uh, I, I think he got lost in the idea that the national stockpile, while the number one use of it is things that are sort of assigned to the federal government like the military well, or I, you say number one but what you mean or, is the first use yeah generally speaking in an emergency yes right they would say hey maryland you have a bunch of federal workers we're going to give you these resources right to keep the federal government operating so we can give out more resources down the road right because it doesn't help us to give everything to california and then have a bunch of people who can't survive yeah to give out more stuff later well i'm saying i'm sure walter reed needs some ventilators right I would now guess and yes. uh from that national stockpile walter reed would be one of the first stops true uh but beyond that if there's a bigger crisis at hand where other states might need some of that uh it's supposed to go from the national stockpile to whatever state needs uh help and uh new uh kushner does not uh 
think that's the way that it goes. And so the website was changed. <laughs> uh, and I will say, uh, Jared Kushner also has allegedly made a policy for his private company to ignore the ruling of the Supreme Court of New York, which said no evictions, and they are proceeding with evictions, which really is only scaring people because apparently they're filing them in the court, and the court's like, uh, okay. Yeah. And they're not issuing any yeah. orders, but the person gets a notification that an eviction was filed against them, which freaks you out when you should be worried about, I don't know, being sick yeah. or getting work or anything. And they can't move forward. It's just like your date is blank. Yeah. It, uh, it'll be sometime whenever we get around to it, we'll have that scheduled. But don't worry about it right now. Well, I'm sure there is going to be some story that comes out on the other side of this where oh. somebody gets kicked out the day the all clear of is course. because it's of like, course. well, we filed this three months ago and you had three months of notice that you were going to get kicked out of this apartment. And today's the first day that we're legally allowed to do it. So we're doing it. Here's the moving guys with all your shit in front of the door. Like. But it's just the supreme dick move. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can't actually go through with it, but we're going to do it anyway. Well, you know, it, it's so weird because, like, I feel like, personally, there's sort of a floating, uh, my personal sense of well-being. So, like, we have, uh, we had shot a little bit of the ad for the uh, DTLA t-shirt. Right. Yeah. Uh, before this, it all started. And I'm still in the process of putting that together. But there's a, a, a part of me that feels, should I be out there advertising shirts when a lot of people just lost their jobs? Right. Yeah. And I don't know if somebody who's on Facebook trying to, like, pass the time wants to see an ad for a DTLA shirt sure. <laughs> at this time. Uh, but at the same time, we need to make money. Mm -hmm. I don't have a job coming up for quite some time. Yep. I don't know when it's going to actually be. It'd be nice if some T-shirts got sold. Absolutely. Uh, but it's like, to, you know, where do you draw the line where you're trying to be empathetic to other people who are in a situation, but you still have to do business as usual to a certain extent? And I think that in places like Kushner and his apartment complex, you can see the line a lot clearer where yeah. it's... Yeah. Uh, I don't, think, I don't think offering a product for sale if somebody can afford it is necessarily bad right. taste. There are tons of people like Rachel and I who are able to work from home, yep. continuing to work. And you know what? Would I look at those some of those things I'm seeing on Facebook now and I'm like, hey, local business, great. Yeah. I'm going to just buy something I maybe wouldn't have bought before, but I want to support things that are local right, right now. Right, right. But uh, yeah, and somebody who sees it is like, well, I don't have 20 bucks. Okay, man, skip past it. You don't have yeah. to. You don't have to get one. It's like way free. <laughs> it's way different to threaten to evict someone yeah. who may be concerned about you know the sick person in their household. Like, what are we gonna do if we get evicted? Because grandma's got a cough and we don't have insurance right yeah. now. So, or where do you go? I mean, oh, I, yeah. I can't imagine that New York is showing a lot of apartments right yeah. now. And we'll say that's the one lucky thing is that LA seems to be also on the other side of like, oh, you know what? We're not doing any in person visits, but. You can have a digital uh, tour and apply. And by the way, it's a buyer's market or yeah. renter's market right now. Like they for are the giving away. For the first time in a long time, Ooh. the rent has actually gone down. Oh, like, yeah. That's actually. There was a place that was like advertising and it was like, this is an $1,800 a month. And I was like, okay, uh, well, that's like out of my price range. But then I like scanned down and it's like, we're offering like a tiny type. We're offering a rent break for the first 12 months of the lease. And I'm like. <laughs> That's the whole lease. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's going to be down to fourteen hundred for the entire lease. So, what you're saying is, if I renew at the end of that lease, I should expect it to go up to eighteen hundred. Okay. Yeah. So, not going to renew, but all right, let's. Uh, I'll let's, go there for the first part. I'll go there for the first year. That's yeah. fine. But it's just, yeah, it's a buyer's market for the first time in a long time because, well, not. Well, I mean, and you know, again, going to the empathy of this whole thing, it's right. because people can't afford to. Get it. Get new place. I, I know just a ton of people who just spent the last dollar they had on rent that yep. was due this month, and now they're trying to happen? figure it out. Like, yeah, what's going to happen? I now? don't know where rent is next month, kind of thing. And, and that's that's really uh, scary. It, it's scary. Yep. I mean, like it, you know. And if you're in a place like L.A., where so many people come from somewhere else, like at what point do you just say, like, I? I have to go back to wherever. Yep. Whenever you can evict. I have to go back to Wisconsin. Like Whenever you can evict, evict. But I ain't going to be here now. I ain't, ain't going to have yeah. your rent next week. I ain't going to have your rent the week after that. You can keep calling. I'll keep hiding my voice.
But and I mean, it's <laughs> no Rob is not Rob. <laughs> Rob don't live there no more. Uh, but it's just it's um. This is anonymous. <laughs> and by the way, I uh, I have sent out a couple emails to a couple places, and just basically like. They are 90% nicer than they were four <laughs> weeks ago when I was sending them out. I was getting replies that were like, how's your credit? Da, da, da. And it was just like, oh, my God, thank you for inquiring. And like, I kind of superseded that in my response. Just like, just so you know, job secure. Don't have to worry about income for the next few weeks. Credit, bit shaky. Listen, that's not a problem at all. Yeah. If you can get a letter from your uh, employer that you've been employed there for a certain amount of time, I'm like, I can do that. Like. All right, well, we'd love to take you on a digital tour of the place. I'm like, ah, oh, it's all coming up rough now. Okie doke. So um, I may be living in a really nice place for the next year. Um, also, slightly concerned because now that I think about it, if somebody moved out because they couldn't afford it, yeah, I wonder how well they clean that joint or if they're just <laughs> like, bring somebody else in. These well, dummies I aren't mean, touring. I mean, I, I think they... The science that I saw, and by the way, uh, real quick, uh, I, I saw a lot of, uh, there's just a lot of awful conspiracy theory oh. stuff going on on Facebook and Twitter the right house now. house frauds on Facebook are like, ridiculous. Uh, the, the ridiculous things I'm hearing are, <laughs> I saw one the other day, uh, uh, just a, a generalized political like uh, fear mongering post where it's just like, uh uh, Schumer is worried the Democrats might lose 15 plus seats this coming election. And I'm just like 15 plus seats. And I looked it up. There's only 13 seats for the, yeah, for reelection available for the Democrats. A lot of them they're not losing. I mean, like Cory Booker is just not going anywhere. No, no. I mean, and you know, most of them are probably safe, but to think that 12, I think is the most that ever changed in one election. And that was when Obama lost six, that was huge. Yeah, that that huge. felt like he lost twenty, like yeah. in in the current scale of things. So like, it's just like nobody has time to check anything. And yeah. like, I remember the tiger story came out the other day where the tiger got co- uh, coronavirus. Yeah, yeah and yeah. people were like, I thought animals couldn't get it. And I'm just like, well, this is why we continue studying this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't hear me saying like, you know, like don't worry about animals because I don't fucking know. Like, who am I? <laughs> like. Also, you know, I'm a uh, filmmaker. I don't I'm not in charge of whether or not people uh, the, all I can do is go off the best information I have at any given point in time. Yeah. And then if I learn something different, then that's fine. I've heard that the likelihood of this illness being transferred from human to animal is exceedingly rare. Yeah. So perhaps this is one of those rare occasions where it happened. Much like I've heard that. uh you, if you get it, much like the chicken pox, you can't get it again. Yep. But that's not necessarily 100% true. It's like just based off of general knowledge of how viruses work. And I have I have jokingly said like, oh, you know, immunity. Like if I test positive and I'm feeling better, I can just go out and walk around. I will still be wearing masks and gloves everywhere. Yeah. Because the last thing I want after getting through the mild version is to get the worst version yeah. and then be like, oh, it could have been so with good. With a weaker immune system coming out of it, too. Yeah. I just like I don't I don't want to deal with it. And I hope that it is. Wouldn't that be great that the next year of my life I don't have to worry while everyone else is kind of stressed about it? Great. I'm still going to do smart things to protect myself. Yeah. I'm not licking subway poles I, or anything. <laughs> is it, is it, I, I got so I, I jokingly said something on a call today, and then I got a message from somebody that was like, "Well, you still should wear your mask." I was like, I'm like, "Yes, of course. I'm not gonna go out and like eat off the sidewalk. <laughs> like, no, I'm gonna protect I will, myself." I, I would I would like to say this just as a as a thing. Uh, I do like wearing the mask and the gloves. <laughs> I, I for for as long as I've basically been alive, I've always wanted to have an excuse to wear gloves in public. I I. I, I don't know why it just fascinates me so much, but it does. I like the idea of wearing gloves and the mask too. Like just having a bandana around my ma- uh, mouth, I just feel like more like confident for whatever reason. Cause I, I, I feel like I'm getting to do something that I don't normally get to do. Corey went out like, looking like a member of the IRA today. Yeah. He had like the four leaf clover thing around yeah. his face and the baseball gloves on. I'm like, are you about to go kill some bobbies? <laughs> What's going on right now? God, I, I, uh, there's not a lot of people to be menaced by me on the streets, but <laughs> yes. I feel like people look at me and be like, I don't want to mess with that guy. Yeah. And yeah. that's a kind of <laughs> kind of security I don't normally have. Like I imagine I walk around and the the criminals are like, There is an easy mark. <laughs> <laughs> Generally speaking. Oh, look at that like, big fat idiot. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're just the uh, listening to my headphones like ooh yeah little bit more. Ooh. <laughs> I was gonna say you're basically the DiCaprio meme while walking down the street most days. <laughs> Now it's like I'm a tough guy too. Yeah. Uh but speaking about walking around, uh LA rules. Um we uh oh I had moved around this damn list. Oh that sucks. Uh oh yeah, the no, LA no groceries. Yeah. Yes. So uh they're actually recommending now that we don't even go out for groceries anymore. And the good news and bad if you news do, is, just one person go get the groceries. Cause like that that's the and that's the thing I've been sort of saying for the last I feel like Corey just read that rule in because no, no, he no. does not want to go get groceries for anything. Oh, he does not hold on a second. House. I will pull up the story. Just give me a second. Well, um, uh, do you have it? I was going to say while you're, I can fill Well, you can, you can fill. Yeah, so while second. he's pulling it up, it, one of the good things, again, about LA is that they have this passive data about cell phones and they're seeing that LA, un- unlike a lot of cities, people are staying in their neighborhoods. And, and I saw related to that grocery story that... Um, they're actually talking about putting a restriction on people just to stay in your own neighborhoods. And the reality of it is most people are like, we are, we are staying downtown for the most part, going to stores downtown, walking there if possible. Um, and so for most people, it wouldn't impact it. And for the couple of knuckleheads that are still going and like having 20 person parties in the Hollywood Hills. Great. Now you can't yeah. cause you can't leave your neighborhood anymore. And most people will be unaffected. That is the, the kind of thing that, uh, when I, I want to look at data, that same data for other cities and just see how much I bet you New York is still a lot of like interborough travel and people going all over the place. Travel's easier in New York, I think, for an individual, uh, just because even if you don't have a car, you can still get places like right now. I don't have a car and Uber is a little hard to come by. So for me, it'd be like, uh, oh, and the trains are shut down now in L.A. So mm-hmm. there's no public transportation for me. It's like I got to find somebody to take me somewhere if I want to go somewhere. So it makes sense. Uh, the no grocery thing, I think, is is one of those, let's act on it before it becomes a problem. Because uh, Corey also saw a story out of uh, Florida where people were going to church just yeah. because they could go to church. Right. There there was people interviewing people pulling into church going, like, why are you going? And it's like, they said it's okay for me to go here. And a and reminder of last week where people went to, uh, like, flooded the beaches and parks because it's the only place in L.A. you could go. And, like, I get the attraction of that, but stay home. Christ, we're trying to get through this together. Did you find the story? No, I'm trying to find one where that where it specifically mentions it. Yeah. All the ones are sort of saying the skip Don't grocery imagine. shopping if possible. Yeah. But apparently in that press conference, they said if there is one person that can be the designated grocery. Because apparently there's a lot of families that are dra- dragging like all four people to the grocery store at the same time to shop. Okay. Well, I, and I, I understand the like you can't leave the you can't have the two parents go out to the grocery store mm-hmm. and leave the kids by themselves so they have to come now but yeah, just take one, one person parent. could just go yeah. and and get all the grocery shopping done and it's one less person that's exposed to but in a four person household where we're all adults i feel like going in pairs where somebody can eye the cart so if anybody tries to grab the chicken out we can just like stab them yeah. shiv them <laughs> I mean, it's basically Mad Max rules, right? That's, that's <laughs> We're getting to the point where it's Mad Max rules. So. Well, I mean, we're starting to get to the gloves and the mask. It's I only know, a matter of time before we're going crazy. into diapers and I am, uh, I'm really, spikes uh, and stuff like that. At what point do you think we can go to the bank and just keep the masks on when we walk in? I, so, <laughs> Did you do that? Did you go to the bank? No, I went to, I went to the... Uh, <laughs> I went to the the corner store like right on Cesar Chavez and Figueroa. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I had it. On, they had a sign on there saying, "Please keep your mask on. Do not remove your mask." Which is so the opposite like, of the, yeah. the, the use. But to I mean, like, I just feel like I'm walking up and I'm just like, "Give me all the money in the rest of the like, <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I have this power now. Like, <laughs> this is why people like Corey should have no power <laughs> ever. Because <laughs> I get a little bit. to wear a mask. Get a little bit and they go crazy. Um, I'm going to turn into Sub-Zero if I just keep <laughs> escalating. Like it's just, The mask is going to become more and more. Well, we are already at 50 minutes. So uh, let's roll through some of this other stuff. Uh, I want to apologize to everyone uh, because last week I said I thought it was a really positive thing that uh, Trump had sounded so much different. Yeah. And I for- forgot that we were dealing with a narcissistic personality disorder. Yeah. Someone who literally plans out everything about their lives so much so that he was <laughs> calculating that, okay, if I say some nice things and I look like I'm, you know, like mea culpa, everybody, I made a mistake. They'll write good stories about me. Then I can just fuck with them for a few days and then also change it back. And yeah. it gives me a couple good days of news coverage in between my kind of shitty days in between. Yeah. The dude... <laughs> Could we have a worse person running the country right now? No, like, literally. Well, Brian Kemp. 
perhaps. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I, if you missed that story, the governor of Georgia said he recently became aware, as in the day before, the, like within the last four days, like, so within the last four days, apparently, Brian Kemp learned, yes. stupid or liar, Brian Kemp within, learned within the last four days that people who aren't showing symptoms of the disease could be carriers and spread it to people uh, who will later die from it. Now, I believe that was one of the first things reported yeah, about this. Which is this why is everyone's dangerous. like, stay home. Like, yes. you don't know if you're sick. Like, don't. So, just yeah. because you're feeling good right now doesn't mean you're going to be feeling good in 10 days when you've touched a thousand people. We love to play the game stupid or liar. Yeah. And this is one of those scenarios where there is no out. Either you are stupid or you are lying. That yeah. is it. There is no in between. There's no way. Number one, I don't. I don't believe that nobody told him oh, no, or that not. he didn't hear it somewhere. The only way he can possibly get around the fact that he actually heard it is that he heard it and denied it. Like CNN the story, Washington don't Post said it. it. Yeah. Nope, like, don't believe it. Nope. I bet that bitch Stacey Abrams said it. Like <laughs> I bet that bitch Carol Baskins <laughs> is behind it. Um, By the way, how much better would Georgia be right now if Brian Kemp had not stole the election from Stacey Oh, and Stacey. Abrams? Oh, yeah. I mean, how many people are going to die in Georgia, do you think? Because Brian Kemp stole an election last year. I mean, it's it's kind of, in a way, cruel and unusual punishment mm. to determine how likely you are to survive this crisis based off of what kind of governor you have yep. or what kind of mayor you have. And, you know, there's places where, like, you know, in Baltimore, where Jack Young has no authority whatsoever. Nope. He's yep. basically just been like, hey, listen to Hogan. Like, yeah, I'm filling the seat <laughs> yeah. until, the, until the election. By well, the way, you're running for well, that Well, Hogan said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, it seems like he's doing very little. And, mm. I mean, at least. Major American city, by But the at way. least, you know, the, the state is being covered well by by Hogan at the time. If uh, uh, The governor of Texas, or Alabama. Alabama was the worst I oh, heard. Oh, K, K, what's her Ivy face? or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. By the way, my, she looks like my grandmother. Why is she yeah. governor of anything? I don't want my grandmother to be governor or something. No. You're a crazy old lady. Stay yeah. home. We know her. She, <laughs> she's been here for 75 years. That's reasons not to be governor. Not a reason to vote for She somebody. remembers when Alabama was good. <laughs> you, wait, wait a second. <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. At, what point, at what point was the good years in Alabama? <laughs> I just want to know. I just I need to know for... What's the baseline for, for good? <laughs> for reasons. For reasons. I want to know what weird theory you're talking about. But oh, yeah. that year when you were only 47th in math and reading. That's uh, okay. right. That's a good year. That was a pretty good year. But I mean, there's another one. that The, the Democrat in Alabama. <laughs> Take that, Mississippi. <laughs> the Democrat in Alabama who, I mean, lost way more than Stacey Abrams did. And there were there were no allegations that it was stolen. But it was yeah. just like uh, Kay. God, I can never remember her last name. Ivy. Kay Ivy. Got the backing of Trump in her election, and that was it. In Alabama, getting Trump to come down there and be yeah. like, "This woman should be your governor." Game well, over. Just look at all the things that uh, what's his face said. Roy Moore had to oh. had, had to have come out for him to lose that election by like two points, barely. Like, yeah. Barely. He was. There were stories about him going to shopping malls to talk to teenage girls, and that was the level of nonsense we had to get to before. Defeated by 2%. Before this crazy person <laughs> doesn't deserve to be a senator. Oh, my God. Uh, but, anyway. yeah, no, but that, I mean, first of all, at some point, can we just start saying, listen, uh, maybe we should have lost the Civil War. Maybe we should <laughs> just let them go off, make their own country. They'd be dead by now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> eventually we can just reconquer the land. It'll be empty of people. There'll be no vaccinations. Well, they'll all have Ebola. 10% and of the population remains. We'll just be like, all right, survivors come with us. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is the way I think maybe we're on to something here when it comes to fixing this country. The problem, though, is where do we put the dividing line? Because Wisconsin seems like it's about to be at a civil war for itself as well. This this whole thing with Wisconsin is just incredible to me. So uh, constitutional crisis in, in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is is very much the definition of a purple state. Yes. They have elected Republicans and they have elected Democrats at the head of uh the, at the governorship, and they have done mm. it for the presidential election in the last 20 years. They've and been very back liberal, and forth. Liberal Democrats, very conservative Republicans, yeah. and then these weird middle grounders. Like, it's so, it's such a weird state. I right. don't understand. 
Well, and because it's such a weird state, they're really worried about precedent setting. Uh, because it, it you know, it, it, what's go- good for the goose is good for the gander. So the Unlike Republicans, maybe a former president who bombed brown children all around the world <laughs> and said this could never go wrong, uh, and give a Republican the authority to yeah. bomb brown children all over the world. Yes, yeah, they worry about that kind of thing. So uh, the uh, state house in Wisconsin is Republican. The governor is a Democrat. The s- state supreme court is uh, five four Republican. Yes. Um, that's the things you need to know going in. Uh, the election in Wisconsin is today as you're listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Evers, the governor wanted to postpone the election until the end of July or something like that. They've already postponed the democratic national committee or convention, which is happening in Wisconsin. Uh, it was supposed to be in July or whatever, but not now. Nope. Um, and, he had to reconvene the state legislator, late state legislature, to have them vote on whether or not they could move the election, mm-hmm. and they said no. So now he used emergency order to postpone the election, but then the state supreme court said no, you can't do that. So tomorrow there is going to be an election in Wisconsin, where in Milwaukee alone, where there was 180 poll centers. Under the best case scenario, yep. there's going to be five tomorrow. Yay. Um, they Democracy. Have, they have vote by mail, but you have to order the ballot in advance. In advance, right. Uh, much like an absentee ballot would, would I go. I was going to say, and most states that allow you to, you would have had to order it before this entire crisis <laughs> started. Because it's usually right. eight weeks to ten weeks ahead of time. So even if you want to vote by mail, you can't. And let's say you want to go vote. Great. Go stand in a line nine hours long. Right. With 100,000 people. Yeah. Because there's five polling sites open. Yeah. And I mean, like. Uh, and by the way, people who've heard the news stories, they may have only heard the story that the governor said elections going to be postponed. Well, how okay. bad do you want it? So, uh, you know, Bernie was hoping to have a good day in Wisconsin yep. under a if. <laughs> If things were fine, there was yeah. no coronavirus, I think he was hoping that uh, Wisconsin would come out for him. Um, now, how badly do you want to vote for Bernie? Like, yep. <laughs> it's sort of put out there. And if you're a Joe person, how badly do you want to go out there to make sure that these young Bernie people don't go out and vote See, now, and I was, win Wisconsin? Like, I was going to say, I think that advantage is Bernie because yeah. you get a bunch of people. His voters are way younger, and they're also the ones who are... <laughs> at spring break saying like I don't care about no corona I'll get corona to vote for Bernie but yeah <laughs> and Joe people are like <laughs> one guy in line going like well I currently have corona so I'm really hoping that universal health care thing kicks in pretty quick that's <laughs> why I'm voting for Bernie it's kind of a last ditch thing he just see everybody behind him in line like <laughs> social distancing right We're- <laughs> We're uh, we're moving this from six feet to sixty feet. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, by the way, you want to get to the front of the voting line? <laughs> Just let everybody know around you, like, "Well, I have Corona, and I'm really hoping to get this universal <laughs> healthcare thing rolling." <laughs> uh, go ahead. No, you, you think it, you think it'll be up by the end of the week, right? He wins this election, and then he's president, right? This is how this works. We're all voting today. <laughs> <laughs> Uninformed populace. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, so... I really like his positions on how we should eat and kill children. It's just like, <laughs> let's not stop him. He's voting yeah, for Bernie. He's fine. It's fine. <laughs> he doesn't have to know all the issues. But by the way, this is something that's going to repeat itself because we are midway through the primary process right. and we are nowhere near midway through the well, corona crisis. At, at this point, I, I don't see a path forward for Bernie. I, I just don't... Uh, unless just like he wins all these states by... 10 people voting, going out to the polls and actually doing the voting. How like, about uh, Joe Biden has a heart attack? Well, I mean, that's Corona. That's a that's a, a possibility, too. But I mean, if that were to if you were to drop out today and Joe were to die on Friday, then I'm sure they would find some way to still get him back in. nominate yeah. him. For the, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> or they would just see what Tim Kaine was up to. And <laughs> <laughs> the one person I want less than Joe Biden, Tim Kaine, <laughs> just like Bernie's up on the stage. It's just like. Uh, with the unfortunate death of Joe Biden, I, f- I figured we should come out as a party and explain what we're going to be doing. <laughs> uh, we're just going to nominate. And Bernie like starts walking slowly up towards the podium and is like, Tim Kaine. <laughs> wait, wait, let me see if I can get off camera here. All of a sudden, out of nowhere. 
Hi, guys. I'm Martin O'Malley. <laughs> you might remember me from such things as the 2004 Democratic primary. <laughs> I've been out with my rock band, but... Uh, I was the guy who finished third in that race. <laughs> <laughs> I was in longer than Tim Kaine, technically. Don't look, don't look at the numbers. I finished third. Uh, I, <laughs> I absolutely was in there the third place. <laughs> Listen, they don't look at the score at the scoreboard. They just look at who won. Absolutely. <laughs> um, um, yeah, but uh, should Bernie drop out? That's the question. I, I think that probably for the best he, he does because uh, I... I don't see how he can garner the type of support that would allow him to at this point I just I, I, I'm I'm okay pulling the lever for Biden, but I would do it in a listen, you are on thin ice the second you get in I'm not there's no learning curve, you know? Like if you do something that I don't approve of, you're going to hear about it immediately. And I will vote you out. I will I will vote for Marco Rubio or something like that if it comes to it. Unfortunately, we only have these things every four years. So once right he's now. in, he's in. And by the way, once we choose him, he's Believe me, I know. Trump. We've been living through this Trump thing for a while. He's running against Trump, though. So that means, like, after this, he's our guy against Trump. And I have not seen Biden, but I have seen a lot of Trump. Yeah. And I've also seen a lot of Bernie. Yeah. And the question is, do you want the guy who is... A leader in a crisis, which Bernie seems to be. Yeah. Or do you want the guy who's the known quantity who literally only seems to be supported by Democratic like party people? I would I would say this. Um, I don't I obviously I would prefer Bernie. I think Bernie is a a you know, a, there's no disputing that. It's the I feel like Joe and Bernie would do a similar thing, which is get the best people they can possibly be to be experts for them during a time like this. You know, like, I don't know about that. You know how everyone likes Dr. Fauci so much? Yeah. Like, it's because he knows what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. We would find a it, it might still be Fauci. Like, to be honest, if it was Biden or Bernie in this situation right now, it'd probably be Fauci. What is the number one factor? He's one of the leading uh, disease experts in the country. So. We talked about this in the pre-show. What is the number one thing that could improve the corona situation right now? If there was a stronger federal government response earlier on in the process. Before we knew that. about this before way before. That. It. Before that. Well, <laughs> coordinate for all the states. And before that. I don't know what you're getting at. So, so right now, I am concerned. You are concerned mm -hmm. about someone sitting at home who's sick but has to go to work. Right. And they can't go to the doctor because... And they're afraid to say anything to anyone about being sick because they need the income. Yeah. If they come up positive... They can't work. And what am I going to do about my bills? Medicare for all or whatever you want to call it. Right. A universal health care system means that this crisis doesn't get off the ground nearly as fast as it did. And also a more intelligent person who deals with the crisis when it arises. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But first of all, people start getting sick and no one thinks twice about going to the doctor. They just show up at their doctor and say, hey, not feeling good. Let's get look into this. Maybe we put the kibosh on a lot of this insane exponential growth. Yeah. Do we get universal health care with Joe Biden? I think that... Oh, come hold on. on. Hold on, hold on, hold the on. The guy in the pocket of the insurance company is going I, to give us universal health care. I think, Bert, I think Bernie's uh, leverage right now is higher than it would be if he allowed a couple more primaries to play out. Okay. So... Oh, I'm going to get Joe to agree to no, but push I'm saying, for that? I'm saying, like, the, the type of margins he has, Bernie has to win by in, like, every state is, like, 70% if, to 30. Well, unless, on, why aren't we asking if Joe should drop out? Why doesn't Joe drop out? Because, well, because Joe, Joe's the leader in the... He's the leader if you include the Democratic superdelegates. No, he's he's the leader in, in the un unconfirmed uh, delegates so far, or the ones that have been voted on so far. He's, he's got a humongous lead. He's got a big lead. But if you count by population, what's the population division? Far closer than right. what the delegate count shows. Clearly. I so mean, he's, why aren't he's, we winning, saying, he's winning a lot of smaller southern states where Bernie is winning things like California. So why aren't we saying, Joe, do the right thing for the country? Clearly, this is the leader we need right now. This is the guy who has the ideas that are going to take our country in the future. I need you to do the right thing and step down. What worries me about Joe is not Joe the person. I feel like Joe the person is honestly a lifelong public servant yeah. and wants to do good for people Absolutely. and wants to improve lives. And he comes from it from an older 
perspective mm-hmm. where the Democratic Party was a little bit different during the Clinton years than they are now. Sure. Um, the average Democrat is more like Bernie nowadays than right. they are like Clinton. Yep. Um, and Biden is definitely more of the Clinton mold of the Democratic Party. Yep. I think that right now Biden is being told by all the people that he trusts, the smarter people in the room per se, it's best if you're not out as much. Just let Trump go out there and do his own thing because we are going to do way better just showing all the Trump fuck ups than we are going to put you in front of camera saying something stupid. Right, exactly. Because if you go I out and you, you have a fireside chat right now and you know it's it's Beth from Virginia Beach wants to know what she's going to do about not having a job. Hey Beth, nice yeah. tits. Now, let's get to your hey, question. Hey Toots, I got a question for you. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't want you don't want Biden to do that sort of shit. So, but we it's have best to worry to, about that. No, I get it, but I'm saying I there Last week we had the conversation about like I have there, there's only so many things I can worry about right now and the most important things have to be at the top of the list. Yeah. I there's not enough bandwidth out there to convince 70% of the people in the remaining states to go out and physically vote for Bernie. Because in a lot of these cases, it would it would still be like Wisconsin, where you would have to physically they they don't have a vote by mail system but worked out for a lot of these. He doesn't states. show up to the convention; they cannot nominate him. That's the thing. He can remove himself from contention at the convention, and then yeah, I, then we have a bunch of uncounted votes. But the number one vote getter is Bernie. I and think then on second I, vote he gets. The I vote. think Biden. I think Biden sees a lot of logic in because he's been in this place where he says something dumb, and then he becomes a story for a couple of days. He would rather just stay out of the wake of Trump doing this to himself. Earlier today in the press conference, Trump like called Schumer a shithead and like yeah. was like nobody likes him and he's a total crackpot and like he's just like losing it on national television. This is at, at any day he could just possibly say something that would become a story for two weeks yeah. where you know Trump is up on the podium and he says I don't give a shit how many people die and then all of a sudden that's all people can talk about how the president doesn't care how many people die of this thing blah 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 like it it doesn't behoove Biden to be out there it behooves Bernie to be out there because the more he's out there more he might be able to pick off Joe in lower turnout states now Mm -hmm. and maybe have a better chance at getting that like 70 percent he needs on a state-by-state basis but it's just it he has it, it it would benefit Biden more if Bernie dropped out now than opposed to later. It would if benefit we, Bernie more for Joe to drop out now than it would for him to drop to drop out later. I, I get it, but I'm saying Biden has to take this from the, the perspective of being the front runner. That's how his campaign is going to handle this. So they, listen, there Bernie was a- Bernie has a lot of leverage right now to just put his arm around Joe and say, like, listen, tough times and uh this isn't going the way I hoped it would. I, you know, Joe and I have had conversations and he is going to adopt a lot of the pop. I mean, he doesn't get to control that. The party the controls D- that at the, the convention. D- the DNC last in 2016 changed a lot. Their party platform. Not about when, the rules to elect people, clearly. A lot of that did change, though. Now, super delegates still outnumber the regular delegates. After the first vote of the uh, delegates who've been nominated by state party people. Sure. So it's not the same thing as like. When you find out that Bernie wins Iowa by 80% but still loses two delegates because 19 superdelegates decided to go yeah. the other way. Like, it, it's it's not the same anymore. So, if you can win it on the first ballot, then you don't need to worry about the superdelegates. There was a time for, for President Biden. And there's Biden. less superdelegates now. There was a time for President Biden. Let me tell you when that was. In 2002. <laughs> no, no. In 2008. Eight years after President Gore, when we needed a nice space filler yeah for president obama to come in 2012 that was the time for president biden unfortunately we didn't get president gore in 2000 we didn't have him go eight years we had to have this ridiculous wartime republican presidency we swung far back to the left on after that and got president obama four years probably before we should have and now this is where we are, where we swung so far left that it caused a swing to the right. You get tr- you get a, a President Gore and you get a nice little like mm, mm, that little moderate taste in your mouth from a Biden. Mm-hmm. And then the country moves f- not left, but it restructures where left is center. 
And then we end up like a European democracy where Obama is a centrist and Biden looks like he's on the right. And then we can actually go move forward. I mean, I and Bernie think, looks like he's progressive, but not crazy. You know, you know what I would I would almost prefer is sort of the. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of conversation about should Biden say that he would only run for one term or he would only serve for one term. And I think there's an interesting logic behind that. Mm -hmm. And he might be able to win some support just by saying that and sort of saying, like, listen, I plan on filling my vice president is going to just be a fucking suit and tie. It's not just going to be some person mm -hmm. who's sitting there. It's going to be somebody substantial. Sure. Ready to take over the job if and when something, something were happens. to happen. Yeah. And that's not where I'm stopping. I'm putting key people as much as I possibly can in the cabinet and positions of trust. And I would like to, at the end of my administration, be able to put my arm around somebody in the organiz in the administration right now. Oh, and how say, about somebody in their 40s? Can yeah. we do that? Somebody in their 40s. Stacey Abrams has been a very good vice president for <laughs> yes. me. I think she's ready to have the big job. I'm taking a back seat. Yeah. I would like you to vote for Stacey Abrams now. Like yeah. that, that is a very reasonable... I, I don't know about Stacey Abrams. She hasn't started as an like, executive. But, if you yeah. feel like you can, you can put enough... Uh, up and coming superstars and positions of, I mean, Obama did this. He put the, uh, you know, Castro in his yep. HUD seat. Yeah. You know, like Castro could have been mayor of San Antonio or he was, his brother was. Yeah. No, he was. Was he was. Him? He was him. It was him. And then he went to HUD. That's how he got his one of them. Up. One of them was mayor. One of them was congressman. And then. You might be right. He might be the yeah. congressman. Yes. It's hard to tell those twins apart. Yes. No brothers apart. Julian might have been congressman Joaquin, then HUD. Yeah. But didn't the brother also serve something in the administration? I don't remember. Because the other thing is you don't stay for all eight years. You come yeah. in for a couple of years and you leave. Right. And by saying one administration, I, four years and I'm out, yeah. you're saying I, there will be no change. I'm bringing in a secretary of state. I'm setting you up for the next vice president. I'm bringing in a vice president and I'm setting you up for who's going to run for president. But you don't even need to say now. like it's no. going to be the vice president who moves on into my spot afterwards. It's no. like I'm bringing in strong, I'm people. Bringing in strong people yeah. so that you can get a sense of what these people would be like if in, in executive experience. Yeah. Do what Trump does every time I'm on TV. Well, until he started looking real sickly, <laughs> my vice president is going to be right there with me. Yeah. You know, I'm going to give them stuff to do so that you know how good they are. And I agree, except for. Just generally speaking, I don't. I, I want to do... I, I, we are, we're already over time. I just want to mention two very important things because I missed it last week. Number one, everyone is going to be getting a $1,200 check. And I don't think it is an odd, odd coincidence that it also costs $1,200 to build a guillotine. <laughs> Maybe that is the solution to this electoral problem. Or the two of us can lump our money together and we can buy a tiger. Build, build a big guillotine. <laughs> yes, a giant guillotine. We should all group together and buy guillotines. And the other thing is... Uh, this is the latest chapter in which 70 year old white guy are we going to choose to to lead us? <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I, I don't I you know I kind of step back at Stacey Abrams. I did that not because she is a black woman, but because she has no executive experience. And I don't know that for you. She was a mayor, wasn't she? Uh, she has I no mean, executive I, experience. I'm just saying she. I listen. I called beat 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 Buttigieg. Buttigieg. Yeah. Realistically, though, that is a lot like me saying Trump in 2016. It's <laughs> cheering for an outlier. And then if he had started winning, I would have been like, hey, listen, okay, so I'm joking. This is not really a good idea. This guy has no idea what he's going to be doing. But by the way, also more prepared than Trump for the presidency yeah. if that had actually happened. But bringing Stacey into like Secretary of State, well, she probably went, Secretary of Interior, Secretary of something that she would have experience in, great, HUD, great idea giving her that executive administration experience and setting her up for something down the road. Yes. But there is also a ton of people who have government experience who are in their forties. I'm just, I'm just really worried that Joe is going to blow this. And who I also, fucking is? I also, is is? I also don't, I, I'm not super confident that, uh, so <laughs> the Rams released a new logo. This is just a quick <laughs> aside. The Rams released a new logo and it's not great, but it's not, you know, awful. It's right. not like the old Wizards logo. You remember that thing, like where it's like pointing at the basketball. You know, like <laughs> that thing was an abomination. It was. It's not that bad. But did they go with the the one where he's like jamming the wizard? Uh, it's like it for a dunk. He, he's like doing like the heartbreak kid. Like he's got like he's one doing? leg out and one leg there, and he's like pointing at like a oh, basketball. No, the bad his, one. The bad one. Yeah, is yeah, him, yeah. But then they went. He's got with like one a star with one hand and like a basketball on the other. I oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That piece of shit. Anywho. 
The Rams Couldn't are go with the bullets. <laughs> the Rams released the new logo, and uh, because it's the internet and it's 2020, everyone's just like, "Fuck this! It's the worst thing ever!" And I can't believe it. And, not that bad, no. but it's, I mean, it's not you know, it's it's Biden. It's it's like fine. It's it's somebody. It's capable. It's L- a logo. Lukewarm water. <laughs> it's a logo. Not satisfying in any way, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, it's Epsom salt. It's fine. <laughs> Unless it's better, it's better unless forever, you, you're gonna die in that shit. Unless the expiration date has passed, then we must <laughs> throw it out. Year old salt. <laughs> By the way, we no. really should have cameras running here 24 <laughs> seven for some of the nonsense that happens here. But sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, it, Joe's gonna point, point Joe's was. gonna ha- Joe's gonna have to understand that when he eventually does say, like, you know, I'm picking Kamala Harris to be my running mate, there's just going to be a bunch of people who are just going to be like, fuck this! This is the worst thing ever! I can't yep. believe you did this! You ruined everything! And then Trump- I was going to vote for you up until this moment, and then just don't fucking panic. Don't- yep, Trump's going to come out and do something dumb, and then that's going to be the Kamala story. Kamala Harris would be a fine vice president if it oh. comes to that. I mean, like, I don't Trump comes want out it to happen. The- <laughs> Trump comes out using the N-word on TV, like, yeah. I ain't worried about running around... Oh, <laughs> and we're back in. See, Joe, and you're then, fine. <laughs> and then Joe's just like, good, I get a time to take more naps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Kamala, just uh, you handle this one. All right. There's this actor, Roberto Arizona, I've been following really closely. He really follows the nap method. <laughs> Says it keeps him sharp. <laughs> and he's still playing Metal Gear. He can't hear a thing. He can't hear a thing <laughs> we're saying. Um, last thing. <laughs> Before we go, <laughs> yes, uh, Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of England, uh, has coronavirus, yes, uh, yeah, and is just this afternoon was transferred to the ICU, uh, where his condition has gotten steadily worse over the yes. course of the day. Apparently, now and obviously, I we we you know uh, being human beings with empathy, <laughs> want to wish him right the speedy recovery. <laughs> Wanted to start there. Yeah. Yes, we don't wish ill of anyone except for Harvey Weinstein, uh, <laughs> who absolutely deserves it. Um, and and Boris Johnson is a horrible person, but in a political way, not yeah. in a thirty years of abusing his power kind of way. Well, in the in the I don't like Stephanie Rawlings Blake because I disagree with her politically, not because I think she deserves to die or anything. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, like, um, but. The worry, th- the worrisome thing is not necessarily his. I mean, it's his health is worrisome, obviously, but it's that his policies have mirrored some people we're familiar with. Yeah. And who would that be? Well, like Trump and Pence, for one. Hmm. I mean, Pence, Pence and uh, uh, Boris Johnson basically had the same quote two weeks ago or whatever, where it's like, we shake hands. That's that's just how it how it do. happens. I can't. Yep. People will look at me weird if I don't shake hands. Uh, and now Boris Johnson is an ICU. We mm-hmm. don't know how he got it. Probably not from shaking hands necessarily, but you know, if he's willing to be cavalier with that, then by the way, you know who else uh, insisted on shaking hands? Pence. Uh, uh, well, Pence, yes, but Trump. also uh, Prince uh, b- 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 Charles. No, uh, not Harry Prince. William, the, the uh, Queen Consort. Um, damn it, Elizabeth's husband. Oh, yeah. Um, he's still alive. Yeah. And uh, he's also cr- positive. Philip? His, Philip? Yes. Philip. Philip? I want to say Philip. I think so. But uh, I'm not so big into the royals. Yeah, I'm either. But th- there was this whole thing where he was just like, no, no, no. There's an expectation that when I meet people, I shake their hand. He is also positive for coronavirus. Yeah. Like, so can we put something together here, people? I would also, a uh, uh, base speculation here. Uh, Pence looks like he's trying desperately to keep something in him. Like and it, Trump was throwing he, him out there all the time. He does not, so not look good. No, I. There is almost a worry that he's just showing up, just being like, "Just don't sweat on TV." Yeah, Mike, how's the fever today? Good. All right, let's get him in makeup and get him out there. We got him propped up. All right, cool. <laughs> looks like Nixon in the debates against Kennedy. <laughs> he's like Franklin Roosevelt in it. He's like kind of like up there, and they're like, "All right, just snap those braces into place. Keep them vertical for the next four minutes." All right, here we go. Can't let them know that the president can't walk. Mm. Um, but again, a guy who's close to the president yeah. all the time, all the time, and he might be sick. And he actually has good health insurance. Yeah, the <laughs> best the, of you. <laughs> but, uh, hiding it because of his job. Something tells me, like, you know, like when Reagan got shot, nobody was like asking about his insurance hmm, premium. Weird. weird. It's like, nobody asked him to fill out a form first, you know? No, no. <laughs> Must be nice. Must be nice to have that government health care. But, uh, yeah. so Sure, listen. we'll take this bullet out of you for no cost. Pretty sweet deal if you ask me. The overarching message of today should be, one, 
you got a, you have low bandwidth. We get that. There's a lot of things to worry about, but pay attention because yeah. there's a lot of important things going on, and you got to be the kind of thing. Uh, you got to be one of those uh, switches. You got to be a bandwidth switcher where it's like, all right, I got 15 percent that's not worried about surviving right now. I'm gonna take 10 percent of that and focus on this today and that tomorrow, and just try to stay informed about different things. Yeah, because too many people are getting obsessed with the house frown nonsense on Facebook and Twitter, and they're getting into murder porn Corona style, where it's just yeah. like. How deep into this investigation? It, none of it matters, and none of it's true. Or maybe some of it's true, but we don't know. So well, just don't worry. Just about generally it. speaking, like if I can leave people with something today, it's I'm seeing a lot of people, and I get it. Like we're all going a little bit crazy, but I'm seeing a lot of people doing this. Like you know, the government is planning something really. Like there was all these talks about like you know the deep state is going to turn off the internet in a couple days, yeah. and like we're gonna. Then all of a sudden, all the people who were like faking their coronavirus are going to suddenly die. And My then friends, the, cousins, ex-husbands, friends. Trump's going to use this opportunity to like, you know, like all that sort of stuff. Like just all these things that people are just speculating out of nowhere. Like look yeah. at the number one. Look at the people who are telling you like like Garcetti, for instance. Right. Yeah. Garcetti is saying, don't go to the grocery store. He's saying, don't leave your house if you can avoid it don't leave your neighborhood stay in ha stay in your home way before anyone else in the country was yeah but at the same time he's also having these press conferences where he's like listen i know i can't tell you to do anything <laughs> please i can't say you can't go to the beach i'm just asking you nicely yeah don't go to the beach like okay you know, now i'm telling you you can't yeah. go to the beach all right it's been seven days of you guys still going to the beach so i'm gonna have to get my volume up a little bit <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, it, there's no like, how well do you think the deep state is operating when nobody can get together in their secret bordellos where they're disguise, describing the plans of how they're going to overturn society? I, We're I all get it. on like, different pages. Deep yeah, state, like, all on different pages. <laughs> like the other one is like uh, any, any deep state conspiracy that involves Trump for whatever reason. Like how the fuck does he keep that inside of him? No, the no. reason why I know there is nothing at area 51 is because there's not a fucking chance. He was able to keep that in there's except no for, I think they didn't tell him. That's why I think it's still there. <laughs> Maybe it's they didn't there, I guess there is a chance. He didn't think like, to ask and he, <laughs> they didn't tell him, Hey, what's going on with this alien thing? Like, ah, it's best if you don't know. <laughs> Good enough for me. <laughs> I mean, but honestly guys, if you think Trump's involved in something deep state, during the time before he was president, he gave away information given to him in a briefing because he wanted to brag about knowing it. How is it possible that he's part of some big conspiracy? Yeah. I do he, not understand how people that lo that make the logical. Leap. Well, and the people who are just like, this is trying to take away our freedom of religion and going to church and stuff like, I, you know, I get it that in the constitution, it says that there will be no restriction on the mm -hmm. ability to, Follow whatever faith you want. And right. You know, I, I get it. For right now, we're just politely asking. Oh, do, and do not go to church. Like, they're not kicking in doors and burning Bibles. They're not throwing you out in the street. They're not taking down live streams of churches. Yeah. They're saying, hey, don't go to one place. Don't congregate. Just like, stay in your homes. Yeah. Live stream it. Which is what everybody in LA is doing, by the way. All the yeah. hippy dippy churches that aren't really religions, that's what they're doing. They're <laughs> live streaming yeah. it. Uh, I, I was, oh, uh, now you've brought down the wrath of Tom Cruise. Wait, what did I say? I said not really religions, and you said Scientology. Oh, I was talking about I was, like the, I, the living water. I was water talking about church. something completely different. That just <laughs> happened to happen at the same time. Never going to work He's in this town again. <laughs> you never hear infamous actor Roberto Arizona talking bad about Scientology. <laughs> Still can't hear. It'll us. be the subject of his first TikTok. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. but yes, the just if I could politely ask everyone, yes, just don't go to church. Like I'm living without sports. Oh, this week I'm getting opening day images of my time hop like every single day like the last 10 days and like, it's i'm getting i'm waking up all misty eyed just looking at us getting drunk at six in the morning. Like <laughs> I I technically you're going to bed. <laughs> watching images of you getting oh, hey, time hops up now. <laughs> it beat the sun uh the i i just if i can go without the sports if the, I've, i haven't watched the sport in like uh, two weeks now I like, know. I there's know. nothing like just give me this like Was i'm making sacrifices you can make sacrifices too you know what the great thing about 
uh, God and Christ is that you can do this on your own time. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to go to the church. You could, if you were, uh, you know, like bedridden because you can't walk and you know, you can't go to the church service. God isn't going to look at you differently when you show up at the pearly gates with your Bible, like clutched next to you. He's going to be like, you read every day. You were a good person. Get in here. You know, like, you're not Mormon, but I'll let I'll make an exception this time. Come on in. <laughs> and then it's fine. Like you, you don't have to you know, he, he's not checking attendance when, sure. when you get to heaven. Like also, um, there is no God and you've wasted your whole life. Anyway, so uh, I'm saying if for the people who believe that there is, let's sure. just, let's just say that there's sure. <laughs> there, Peter doesn't Peter doesn't check attendance. That's if all. if there is a heaven and there is a God and there is a Peter at the gate. He's not seeing how many times you went to church. He's seeing all the times you cheated on your wife, which you should be more worried about than the times you went to church. <laughs> It'd be funny if they just bolt up the board and it's just like, all right, so uh, we just came up with a simple and effective policy where it's how many times you went to church minus how many times you masturbated. If it's a, <laughs> if it's a positive number, then <laughs> I'll see myself. Welcome out. to heaven. If it's a negative number, we'll see you in hell. It's just like, please don't run the math. I'll see you later. <laughs> Not necessary. <laughs> Thanks for I, I it was a pleasure just be considered. <laughs> There's only a chance to go to church once a week. <laughs> That's not true. They have mass down at that cathedral every single day for the non relapsed Catholics. <laughs> they, you can you can I can only go to church once a day, hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in quarantine, man. I can't even go to church, but I'm at home with my thoughts and the internet. You can't, can't imagine how quickly I got to get this stuff out of me. And a closed door with my girlfriend on the other side. <laughs> that might have got a little too personal, I'm, sorry. <laughs> well, I have to go out on the balcony and smoke for a little bit. Close the curtain. Can't let anyone in the house know what I'm doing. <laughs> There's not that little traffic on the one Just side. one person right? driving by going like, well, what I'll the? be. <laughs> Furiously in the corner. <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough. We've clearly gone too far. Well, if we gave you a laugh in this time, <laughs> drying time, you know where you can go to show support. Where is that? Oh, the anthem.com. Gordy of the anthem.com. Oh, the anthem on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line 443 219 7595. What's the number again? 443 219 7595. And you can find more of me at my website, CoreyBakerFilmmaker.com, Facebook.com forward slash CoreyBakerFilm, and at LegendCB5 on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, new review uh, from Thursday, a new review today. I had the uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire on Thursday and Jay and Silent Bob reboot today. Mm. So uh, covering the gamut. There's sure. many. That's a big, it's a, big gap. It's a big spectrum of <laughs> movies there. Um but go check them out and tell me what you think. And if there's anything you want me to see, let me know and I'll put it on the list. Yes. And uh, while I realize we just completely skipped doing all of the socials today. So yeah. you can find more O the Anthem at O the Anthem <laughs> on all your social media networks. Uh, of course, that is Facebook, Instagram, uh, and Twitter at O the Anthem. Uh, we do our episodes live on Facebook, on Twitch, on Periscope, which is through Twitter, and on YouTube. And of course, you can find all the videos at youtube.com forward slash O the Anthem. And as I said in the opening, or discussed earlier anyway, you can find everything O the Anthem related, including the store where there is merch up, including the DTLA shirt, which is a fantastic shirt, I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all available at odanthem.com. We saw it live and in person on a person. So. Yes, on a very attractive person. <laughs> Still who not has, listening. Who does not, uh, who has a uh, boyfriend who does not deserve her at all. <laughs> just so that's clear. Hope he listens to this later. Looking Still not listening. Him. Yeah. So you can find more of me at Robert and Cheek on all your social networks. Make sure you check out robertandcheek.com where you can find links to my political blog, my news website, and the books which are available on a website on... <laughs> Amazon. Buy those books. Uh, of course, you can check out YouTube.com forward slash Rob Cheek for all of the blog vlog videos, uh, like me going to get uh, my test, uh, how my health is doing, and everything that's been going on. Uh, I'm doing Huel, uh, so you can check out the Huel videos there as well, and the Everyman Movie Review. Uh, all those videos are available on YouTube. Uh, I recently did a review. I have no idea what it was for. 
Um, I just did it last night. I should probably know. Snow, Snow Piercer. Yeah, that's what it Bong was. Bong Joon Ho. Yeah. Yes, Bong Joon Ho's. Uh, not his first movie, but the first one that had wide appeal in the United States. Yeah, the first American. Yeah. Movie, I guess. If you um, and uh, surprisingly good, and surprised me. I saw it in 2013. Surprised me again when I watched it again this year. So, uh, I got a bunch of stuff shot. It's all gonna go up, uh, and you can keep track of all that stuff over on YouTube. Uh, oh, and the website is up. Yeah. Did I mention that in the no. little spiel? I went through my spiel and I forgot. You uh, mentioned yeah, so, the website, but you didn't talk, talk yes. about how. The website, robertandcheek.com, is up in a very rough form. It's been down for a while. I'm teaching myself Dreamweaver, so it'll be a slow process. Uh, I think what I took four hours to get the homepage up. Yeah. But it's up, so we're it's moving there. in the right direction. There's, there's uh, proof of you on the internet. Proof of me on the internet, robertandcheek.com. So. All right. Well, I think we've done good here today. We've done something, but I know it is not good. <laughs> 100% certain. 100% not certain. Good. But as always, you're listening to the O the Anthem podcast, part of the O the Anthem digital network. For Corey, this is Rob. Make sure you join the Facebook group Anthem Alliance so you can talk about this show and every episode between 1 and 312. Thank you guys for six fantastic years. Looking forward to the next six. Have a great week, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, wait. I, I can't sing this song. No, no. It's in public domain. Oh, it's is fine. it now? Yep. Public domain. I thought it was uh, uh, Patty Hill still had the... Nope. Public domain. Happy birthday, dear. Oh, the Anthem podcast. Plus, I'm pretty sure nobody would be able to know oh, what song you're singing. happy birthday <laughs> to you. Even if it was copyrighted, they wouldn't claim it. <laughs> Dr. Drew dropped dead. Root